Hey, it's Mr. Johns. Welcome to this first episode of Programming in Scratch. We're going to be creating a side-scrolling game, at least some movement, the starts of a game for sure. So scratch.mit.edu is the site, and you simply, once you get an account, you click on Create. Create. So um, this is uh, uh, a hugely popular website um, created by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. That's what that stands for, MIT.edu. So some of the smartest minds in software engineering worked on this, and it just took the world by storm. I mean, it really has introduced so many people to programming, uh, coding, um, and those people, a lot of them have gone on to become software engineers, those who have created your favorite apps and games, etc. Um, just because it's, it's, um, possible to do, to create some pretty easy things, um, for just about everybody, but also challenging enough to, um, push the smartest minds um, in new directions. Uh, so I love that. Um, <clears throat> so I find that there are two, two categories of users. Uh, one, maybe 10% of the users really understand the coding, the logic. Coding is all about logic. And uh, I mean, there are college classes that study logic. It's a, it's a, it's a subject in itself. And coding has its own logic. Everything has to flow in a certain order for it to work and one little change changes everything uh, and so drag and drop coding where you can just drag code blocks over it's really the same as coding because behind every block there is a line or two or five of code <clears throat> and you're just putting those lines together but with drag and drop you don't have to type all that code in it is there it is behind the scenes of every one of these code blocks so let's take a look at the at the scratch screen here right now this is an untitled file um, and i should probably title that so we'll call this um side scroller side scroller good enough um and uh, on the left side, these are the, the blocks like I was talking about, and they're all categor categorized, cataloged, no, categorized into different um, types of code. And I think the genius, one of the genius things about Scratch is, is these color-coded categories. And at, over time, you start to remember what is what and where you need to go. And it just helps the mind think, oh, looks are purple, so I need to go to purple. So just an extra added little detail that really has helped a lot of people. Um, and so these are the code blocks, uh, and you do just simply drag and drop them over to the right. Every, every code block needs to start with a when clicked because up here on the right side, you've got two controls. One is start the, start the program, and one is the other is stop the program. So then you have to have a when clicked command so when you click that green flag, all these things happen, and you create that. That's the magic of becoming a of, of being a programmer. And I know that so many people, especially young people, say, "I want to be a game programmer. I want to make games." But when they look into even Scratch, they are overwhelmed and discouraged, and they think it's too hard. So it is very much something you have to start simple and then build on and and use frequently um, so that eventually you just get better and better and you start understanding the logic the more you do it so so codes are over here uh lower right corner this is backdrops so um, backdrops you can choose down here at the very bottom you've got options to search backdrops make a backdrop in paint uh, just surprise me and give me a backdrop randomly or upload one from your from your computer. So let's go ahead and search and you'll see it brings up, you know, 40, 50 different backdrops. So especially for younger kids, if you just wanted to start like, um, I don't know, here's the field at MIT. So this is their building. <clears throat> so um, and that's kind of cool. So it automatically gives you a backdrop. And uh, I could also say, hey, surprise me. 
bink, and it just gives me a random backdrop if you just can't decide. So that's not a bad one, just for automatically puts in all the bushes and trees and etc. that you normally wouldn't want to take the time to create. So that's the that's the value of a backdrop for sure. Um, the disadvantage is that is a backdrop that anybody using Scratch can use. And so, you know, you want it to be unique, um, especially once you get a little more experienced and you want to share these and publish these with other people. Um, it's nice to have maybe a custom backdrop. But these are great starting points. Um, so once I change that, let's bounce back over here to the left side under costumes. So this, this is the coding for the backdrop. There's nothing, right? Under costumes for the backdrop. Oh backdrop sorry you have to select what you want so the backdrop now has three of these costumes they're called so the backdrop has costumes and so do the characters like the cat here he will have costumes and the costumes are just like changes to that character or to that graphic so we have the backdrop that we started with, which is blank. We have the field at MIT, which was the one I did randomly, and then the forest that I selected. So these are all here. Um, I actually don't need these, so I'm gonna delete those just by hitting trash can, um, and gone. So I've just stuck with this nothing backdrop. Next to that on the left here, these are the sprites, they're called, which are the characters, the graphics, right? So it's really another term for graphics. So right now there's just, sprite one which is by the way his name is scratch he is their their mascot um and so a lot of people learn to animate um oh i took his head off didn't mean to do that um they learn to animate by um moving and so you can change um you can do a lot of changing in just to him and learn some basic animation so just if this was a a lesson on animation we could move his arms and legs and make him look like he's walking which is which is cool that would be a fun project but we're not going to go that direction today and we don't need him so let's go ahead and delete him as well um, same kind of thing as the backdrops down here where the cat logo is you can search paint uh, surprise me or upload a sprite so if we click on search it brings up many more things. These are all little cartoon characters. Again, uh, mostly for very young and new new users who maybe just want to choose something like the crab and see some animations are already built in. So, you know, for a second grader, third grader, they get excited if they can put this crab in their game and it already kind of does some movement and they maybe they'll learn how to make the crab um, crab walk move side to side a little bit and that's what they do and um, that's the goal, which is great. Um, again, I don't like to use any of these. These are all your standard, uh, scratch characters. So we're going to make our own in the upper right. This is the preview, um, window, which you can see what your program looks like. So we're going to start with the backdrop. We would like to make this like a sky. So when I click on it, um, if it doesn't go to where you want it to go, you can always go to the paintbrush, but it kind of defaults to that. So <clears throat> um, this is um, th the size of this rectangle is the size of the screen. So what I'm going to do is just paint a blue rectangle over this shape. So I'm going to click on fill, which is the colors, and I'm going to find a color of blue that I like. Now you can choose any color you want doesn't matter it's your sky and once i find the color i like i just click off of it and then rectangle tool and i like to always draw outside the lines to to make sure it fits so i mean i have this much room i could make it even bigger it doesn't matter if it's outside it will for sure cover the, the window so that looks good enough, and so that is our backdrop. It's called, the costume is called Backdrop 1. That's fine for now. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into our first sprite. So let's go to Paintbrush under Sprite, and we're going to make a little character. And to do this, we're going to keep it so simple. We're going to create a square with eyeballs. So I'm going to change the color from blue because he'd be invisible if he was the same color. 
So anything bright that might stand out against um, blue, so I'm going to choose yellow. Um, if you want him to have an outline, that's what this is right here, this box. Um, and you can choose what color the outline would be. So certainly play with that. And um, I'm going to make my outline three, just guessing really there. And uh, the outline color should be right here. So I'm going to make it uh, dark, dark. And now I'm going to draw a little square right in the middle. And so it's yellow with a size three outline around him or her or it. I guess it's an it. It's a square. Um, and if you don't want that outline, you can choose the slash here, and that will turn the outline off. Now, that doesn't change, make it go away. I've already created it. So if I were going to make another one, it would make it without the outline. So you choose which one you like best. I think the outline makes it show up a little bit better against that background. So I'm going to delete my old one. Also, I'm going to change the name in this box where we have this new sprite. We're going to call this player. So type in player. Um, and you can change where it is on the screen. And that, that changes. As I move this square around, these numbers change. So this is a grid with zero in the middle. Uh, and then it just goes positive one direction and negative the other direction. So as I change that, you can see exactly what the where it is on the grid. It doesn't matter in the preview screen because we can control that in our coding. So you can also change the size of your um, sprites right here. Um, whoops, let's make it back to 100. Um, the direction it's facing, it's a square, so it doesn't really matter. And also whether you see it or don't see it in the program. All right. So... By the way, you can also change the size here just by dragging the corners. So uh, it does not change the 100% because whatever you do here in the paint program, it is 100%. And then I could change the size over here. So just two different ways to change the size. I'm looking for a character. Uh, I'm basing this you know, on the concept of a Super Mario Brothers side scroller. So I want um, the character to be smallish so it can jump on top of some ground and interact with its world. Okay, so there we go. It's a cute little square. And next, what I'd like to do is draw some eyes. Uh, and because I don't think I can do it this small, I'm going to zoom in. So down here in the lower right corner of this window, I can zoom in until I can see a little bit better. I'm going to make the eyes dark, like a black color. So I'm just going to change the color to black. And I'm going to change the thickness to 12. Um, let's go 10. And then I'm going to use the, the line tool to create two, uh, hopefully straight up and down. Try to make it vertical. It doesn't really matter. They're eyes. So I make one, and I could draw another one and try to make it the same exact, but the best way to do this is the Select tool and just click it once, and then Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste, and it makes another eye exactly like the first one. Um, so there's no question that it's exactly the same. So I'm going to put these right in the middle um, so the character is looking at us. In fact, um, our sprite is named Player, and this first character, sorry, costume, is called Costume 1. Let's change the name of that to Straight. And what I mean by that, the eyes are looking straight at us. So uh, that's the costume. Okay, so I think we're good there. And um, let's create a second, a second sprite. So click on the cat icon and then paintbrush. We need some ground. So... Uh, we're going to call this ground. So let's go ahead and change the name right here to ground. And I'm going to change the color to like a brown. Sometimes it's a little hard to find the color you want. You have to do a lot of sliding around sometimes to figure out. And if you're an art student, you're probably a lot faster at it than I am because you're like, oh, yeah, I know exactly where it is on the rainbow. I don't. I'm just 
looking and getting lucky. I don't want red. I need more of a brown. So I'm trying to figure out what side of the rainbow that is. So uh, brown should be where the oranges are, right? Maybe. So there we go. We're getting closer. Brown. That works. So I'm going to uh, make, oh, make sure there's no outline on this. That's important. We don't want there to be a black outline um, because we will need to be interacting with this this color, which is brown. So it's a, it's a rectangle tool, brown, no outline, and we're going to put it down at the bottom of the screen like so. And remember, up here, it doesn't matter where it is um, because we can tell it where to go, which we will do in a moment. Uh, on top of the brown, just a little layer of green. So find some really bright, whatever. And by the way, this is your your game. So you want purple and yellow. You want red and whatever, blue. It doesn't matter. I'm just going for kind of a Mario looking. Uh, oh, I know I made a mistake here. Uh, I, I do this a lot. Um, I forgot to unselect my ground. Now I have to go back and find that brown again. What are the chances that I can find it again? So I got lucky the first time, I think. So uh, let's see. First of all, I know I decided it was down here where the oranges are and uh, darker and darker. There we go. So I'll show you the mistake I made. Uh, so this is a rectangle, no outline, brown. It's the ground. And I want it to be kind of at the bottom like that. And the mistake I made was I didn't unselect it like that because... I, what I did is I still had it selected when I changed the color to green. So now if I change the color to green, green grass, um, and make sure there's no outline, new rectangle, I can just put this right on top. Make sure it overlaps. Make sure there's no gap like that. It overlaps. And because we're outside the box, it doesn't matter if that matches up exactly at all. Just right here is fine. So on the screen, just kind of decide, is this... <clears throat> Does this look about the way you would want it to look? Is this the start of a level that would be fun to play? <clears throat> it, <clears throat> excuse me. It does look like um, that's about right. I think I like that. Um, so one thing we can do with the ground. Oh, I, I need to make sure. I, I, I deleted my first ground that I called ground. So I had to create a new one. So now it was called Sprite 1. So I need to rename that ground. All right. So that is our sprite called ground. And the costume, there's just one costume. It's this. And it's called Costume 1. We're going to leave it like that. We're going to do our first coding. So click on the Code tab. Everything that you create, <clears throat> including <clears throat> the backdrops, everything, has three tabs. It has some coding if you want to code something to it. It has costumes, which is how it looks. And it has sound effects that might go with that um, sprite. So under code tab with the player selected, and by the way, if you're not sure, just look right here in the upper right corner of the coding window, it shows you what you are coding. But I can also just look over here and see that it is selected. So we're going to say, hey, uh, oh, let's do ground. Sorry, ground. So ground, ground. That's exactly my point. Exactly right there. So, hey, ground, when I click the game to start, I want you to go to, which is a motion, so blue, go to, and it has an X and Y coordinate. Drag that over here and just type in zero for X and zero for Y. And now what you'll notice is if I even drag the ground up here and then I hit start, it snaps right to zero, zero. Puts it right in the middle bottom. And that's exactly, um, so every time we start the game, the ground, just in case it gets moved somehow, who knows, uh, it'll always bink, start right where it should go. So you just did your first coding. Congratulations. Um, let's do the same thing with our player. We want him to start on the ground, like touching grass, right? Barely touching grass. I mean, you could have him right there too. That makes it look like there's a little bit of depth, which is kind of cool. He doesn't have to be on the top of the grass. So yeah, we could have him here. <clears throat> um, but I think think it's going to be easier if later on we do jumping where he bounces off the grass, not the dirt. You know what I'm saying? So let's just go ahead and put him right on top of the grass. Now, 
I want you to do something. Look over here at that go to X, Y coordinate and look what those numbers do as I drag my character around. I had I showed you this earlier where these numbers change, but they always they also change in the code block, which is genius. There's some things that Scratch does that's so smart, and that's one of them. It didn't it didn't have to do that, but the programmers coded it to do that. So I just drag my character to where I wanted to start. And those coordinates are already there for me. Negative 182x and negative 98y. I'm just going to go ahead and drag that. And what that does is it locks that in place. So now even if I change it now, the next block changes. But the one that I locked in place, it remembers where I liked it. So I'm going to go back to events and when clicked. Events when clicked. You will eventually get to know all these colors and where things are. So now we have some coding. Watch what happens. If I drag the ground and the character up here, we have told the ground to go to 0, 0. We've told the player to go to negative 182, negative 98 when I hit play, which is exactly what it does. So I know that's such a minor little thing, but I still get excited about that because we programmed that we told the ground and the sprite where to be when we hit start and uh, I just still find that really uh, cool so all right we definitely need some more um, action though we need some movement so we're going to add some movement in um, and so what we need is uh, something that's going to happen forever and down here under the control so they're basically I think there are what I would call three colors of orange light medium and dark um, so the medium is control and we want to grab this forever loop and just drop it right here because we want this to happen while you're playing the game the whole time forever until you stop so what we want to do is say hey um, when I so the logic here is when I press the right arrow that character should move right okay um, so we need to add in um, if I press, so that's an if then statement or if then loop, right? So right here, there's an if then. And so we're going to put that in the forever loop and it snaps together. Okay. So you can see this forever loop forever. And then at the bottom, there's this arrow right here. And the arrow means when it gets to the bottom, go back to the top and do it again forever. That's how that works. So if we press the right arrow, so that's going to be a sensing. It's a light blue, and it is a key pressed command. Drag, drop. If the key right arrow is pressed, then we need it to go right. Now, there's not a command called go right. It doesn't work that way. It's X and Y in programming. Uh, at least in scratch and so um, we need to create x and y they are not listed anywhere you think they would be um, they're not so we're going to create two variables so click on the dark orange and we're going to make a variable we're going to call it x so x is going to be left and right always and you could call this left and right you could call this horizontal if you want to, but just to get you thinking in programming terms, X means horizontal, X means left and right. So, um, and just to remind you, look where my mouse is on the screen. So this arrow, double arrow, left, right, X. So left, right is X, up, down arrows is Y. So if you ever forget, just look right here. So basically we have, now we have a variable called X. Notice that it shows up on the screen right here. Um, that's because you might want a variable called score or points. Um, and if you if you make a little game um, like basketball or hockey, um, every time you score, it would change that number uh, to one. If it was football, it would change it by six, um, et cetera. So you might want that to be visible. In this case, we don't. We want this to be kind of behind the scenes. So we're going to uncheck this blue box and it goes away. We're going to make another variable. This one's called Y. 
So that's up and down, click OK. And I'll same thing here, turn it off so we don't see it. So now we have these variables. So we can say that, hey, if I press the right arrow, we want to change X. Like from where the yellow square is, we want to change the X and make him go to the right. So we're going to change snap that right there and then my variable we're going to change that to x and we'll just leave one one you can play with that later and see what happens so when i click click the green arrow he goes back to the beginning but nothing happens yet there's not enough information so um now we need to tell it to go left so the fastest way to do this is just hover over that um if then loop right click and duplicate it makes a second one we're going to put it make sure you put it under the that first if then don't put it in the if then right there that's important so with coding where you put things where you snap things together makes all the difference in the world it could it can make it work or not work so make sure your screen looks like my screen and we're going to simply change the right arrow to the left arrow and uh, we're going to say, hey, when you press left arrow, change X by change X by negative one. So um, one second, negative one. OK. All right, cool. Um, that works. So right arrow pressed, it goes forward one. Uh, left arrow pressed, it goes backwards one. And what one is, that's just one section one movement so when i press green arrow nothing yep not enough information yet because it doesn't really know what x is like how much is x it just says go forward by one one what we need to tell it that so remember you don't always have to understand everything in programming it will come to you a little bit at a time and that's how it is for me there's some things i look at and go i have no idea why that works but it works so uh and then i change it i play with it a little bit and see what it does and sometimes that helps bring a little bit of understanding uh, so in this case we need to do <clears throat> um, some programming programming that may or may not make sense to you so we're going to set the variable we're going to grab this set variable and put it at the bottom of both of those if thens and we're going to set our x to and that this is a little bit of math. So we're gonna grab an operator. So green is math, and we're gonna make this multiplication. So there's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. It's also greater than, less than, equal, and some other things. So we're gonna grab the math, the multiply times something times something. So we're gonna set x to x times a number. So x, we know x is our variable. So we're gonna drag and drop this right here uh nope we're gonna put it right there there we go we need it to be in there now because what we're doing is we're telling the program what x is and and uh there's a little bit of math to make that happen so i played around with different numbers and anywhere between 0.8 and 0.9 works i tend to like 0.89 seems to be a good number so set x to x times 0.89 so um X times almost one is what that is. And we're gonna hit green flag, left, right, left, right. Yeah, nothing yet. We need one more little code. And that is to change the X. So this is a blue, it's a motion, change X by, and we're gonna put this right underneath the set. Change X by X. And again, I'm not the best at explaining exactly why that works, the logic behind it, not a math teacher, not not a uh, computer science teacher at this point. Um, but I do know that that combination makes all the difference and it makes our character move. If you not, don't believe me, click green flag, right arrow, left arrow. It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I love it. In fact, watch how it slides to a stop, slides to a stop. Now this coding, um, I have seen people do exactly what we just did with twice as much coding and way more complicated to accomplish what we just did with that simple uh, X 
set x to x times 0.89, change x by x. That makes all that happen. It's awesome. So there is one more thing we need to do before we end this episode, and that is give this uh, first level, not really a level, this first screen, a little bit more variety. So let's click back on ground <clears throat> and click on the costume or the paint option. And what we want to do is uh, with the arrow key, select just the ground, not the grass. And we're going to control C to copy, control V to paste, drag it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and make a little, a little hill. So what I mean by that is something like this and we're going to put it kind of over here at the right side of the screen. And you can see in the preview screen how that's going to look. So what we want is something <clears throat> that he will have to jump on. Because if he hits, if he runs into the hill, he should stop. Um, so he'll have to jump. This is our first opportunity to create um, some additional coding next time around, um, hopefully. Um, which will be him jumping with a little bit of gravity and... Uh, uh, it should work. So that's the plan. Now we need some grass on top of that um, because it's a hill. I mean, it should have grass. So I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to select just the grass. I'm going to copy and paste. So control C, control V. I'm going to grab my copied little patch of grass and I'm going to place it right on top. If you want it to overhang a little bit, and by that what I mean is if you want it to look like it's a little bit bigger than the ground, you can have it like that. <clears throat> that's fine. It's That's up to you. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, so that looks pretty good. And I'm thinking maybe on hills, I will do that. Just a little bit of overlap because it's hanging off the edge of the hill. So it looks kind of cool. So there is um, <clears throat> a little hill to jump on. So let's click stop and then start. Let's see what happens when we go over to the hill. Well, nothing. He just runs right through it, right? We haven't programmed that. We haven't we haven't told the program there's a hill even there. So we do need to tell it, hey, when you bump into something, stop. And we also need to tell it when you press space bar or up or W key, whatever you want, it will jump and land on top of that hill, which is what we will tackle next time around. So, but pretty good start. Um, I love that. We have ground with grass. We have a little hill with grass. We have a character that moves left and right, which is super cute. I love it. It's a good start to a cute little game. And hopefully you'll join me next time around. But for now, Mr. Johns is out.